Hello and welcome back to Drunk on Wonderlust. Now today we are looking at the realities and the costs involved of living on a canal narrowboat. Now have you ever dreamed of buying a boat, cruising down the river with the uh, wind in your hair and the freedom to go as far as your imagination would allow? I know I certainly have and so did my friend Jordan. But now his dream has become a reality and he's been living on his boat for just over a month now. And this week, he kindly invited myself and Danny to come and stay with him for the week to find out firsthand the reality of canal boat life. Let's do it. How exciting! We packed our backpacks and caught the train to Hinkley, where Jordan's boat was moored at the Trinity Marina. Hi, I'm Jordan. Uh, the last time you see me on this channel, Drunk on Wonderlust, was when I joined uh, Kerry and Charlotte on the Great Glen Way. Uh, since then, a lot's happened. Uh, the, the journey really made me think and reevaluate my life and what I wanted, and we came up with this bright idea that uh, a canal boat might be a good life for me. Two months later, here we are. Yeah. This was our first time on a canal narrowboat. One thing I'd always been curious about was the interior living space. Come with me, let's come and have a little look around. Okay, so this is my boat. Uh, she's called Martlet, which means it's a mythical bird without feet, so it means it's always on the wing. Uh, she's a 51 foot semi-traditional, which means I get a bit more outdoor space out the back, so when I'm cruising, my friends can come and sit and chill with me. So I'm not getting lonely out on the tiller. Heated by motor stove burner, gas cooker. I'm more data marina, so I've got the plug-in electric, but when I'm out on the go, uh, the electric the, the electric we get from the battery chargers, which is powered up from the engine. And now I'll show you around the kitchen area. So we have built-in fridge, this runs off the 12 volt, so when you're out on the on the cut, you've always got fridge freezer. I've also got a uh, a pro sign inverter, which means that uh, I can still get 240 and use the 240 plug sockets for anything else when I'm out. But not all boats would have that. Uh, I've got my vanette, like cooker and stove, which is waist height which makes it easier. Coming through is the bathroom which is a walk through so if you follow me through uh, it's got the shower on this side and the toilet which is a porta potty you have to empty it yourself we've already done that this morning on this side so if you come all the way through and I'll show you how you can open the bathroom up when you want to use it. Uh, so this is the bedroom uh, you've got two singles one which I'm sleeping in at the moment and the other which is a jumping ground for all of the girls stuff for the visit. Uh, it, it does fold out into a double if you wish to do so but I tend to find that I, I can just quite easily sleep on the single. It saves me having to pull it out every night. Another great thing about sleeping here is we can sleep with this all open in the summer. Sleep under the stars. So this is the extra back seating area you get on a semi-traditional. One thing we forgot to mention is the sofa in the lounge area also folds out into a double bed. We settled in, then took the boat out for a ride down the Ashby Canal. You don't need a driving licence to drive one of these, so after we stopped for lunch later, I was going to have a go myself. Jordan had taken to it very quickly, and even he was surprised with how easy it was to pick up. So we're about to park up and have a little lunch break. Um, I'm going to give Jordan a hand. I'm going to head out into the front of the boat. No idea what I'm doing. Hopefully he'll shout instructions to me. <laughs> My first time helping to moor the boat. I was a bit nervous. Luckily a couple of very kind men were moored up close by and lent a hand as I was clearly looking clueless. But in the end I gradually got the hang of it. all sounds pretty epic so far I know I'm definitely on board but what about the costs involved of life on a canal boat 
The cost of living on a canal boat now, this can vary. It depends whether you're a continual cruiser, or whether you're in a marina, or whether you've got a linear mooring. I myself have chose to be on a marina because I've got all the facilities here and for work, it, it's a lot easier than uh, being a continual cruiser all the time. So first of all, I have to pay my mooring fees. At this mooring fee, it's about 700 a quarter, which is I'd probably say about average for a marina. Uh, and then you've got your river and canal trust uh, tax, which is probably about 900 pounds a year. Uh, and then after that, it's, it's just your energy bills. Like yeah, I'll get solar panels fitted next year, so I won't really have to use much electricity at the minute. I'm only using about 10 pounds worth of electricity a month anyway, without the solar. Uh, the gas for the cooker runs off gas bottles. Uh, I've been told that they only need changing a few times a year. The cost of the gas bottles are probably about £100. I'd say for myself, living here in the in the summer, would my perhaps be not taken into account the cost of the boat. Uh, would be about 300 maybe £300 a month. And then in the winter, because you've got to have probably spend about £20 a week on cold, perhaps be about £400 a month. So, it did seem like a very affordable way of living. Of course, Jordan forgot to mention diesel costs, which obviously depends on how often and far you take the boat out. We stopped to fill up the tank full and it cost just under £70, but Jordan said that was the first time he had refuelled since buying the boat. I took over the steering for a short while. I think I'm a natural. Life on the water is calling me, I'm sure of it. Pros and cons of living on a narrow boat. First of all, one of the pros is you're closer to nature. You feel more uh, connected, more connected with the seasons of the year. Uh, you've got a moving home. So you want to move to a different city or a different town it's really easy to do it's you know you've not got a mortgage on a house where you're stuck in that place for the rest of your life free holidays your friends can come along you can go out on an adventure whenever you like there are the less glamorous parts however such as emptying the porter potty morning <laughs> obviously you're restricted for space so like when i moved in i had to downside massively give loads of clothes to charity shops but to be fair that that doesn't bother me, it's nice to get back to basics, you know. Rosie and Jim, Rosie and Jim, chugging the land of the old ragdoll. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we've had a good look at life on a canal boat. Can you say honestly that you've made the right decision, Jordan? I'm definitely happy that I've made the right decision living on a narrow boat. Yeah, the, the way of life just suits me. Uh, just perfectly. There's definitely a camaraderie between yourselves and the other boaters on the community. You will often go out for a drink or a meal with each other. Uh, I'd say in the six weeks I've been living here, I've seen more of my neighbours than I did of my neighbours when I lived in a conventional uh, flat uh, in the whole three years I was there. So yeah, it's definitely a thumbs up from me. I was so happy that Jordan was enjoying his new way of life. Do any of you out there think you could embrace life on the water? Don't forget to drop us a comment. Well, there we go. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and found it as interesting as we did. Um, now, don't forget, coming up this week, actually tomorrow, I leave to go to Norfolk and I'm hiking another long distance hiking trail. I'm doing the Werryman's Way, which goes from Norwich all the way to Great Yarmouth. So that should be a right laugh. Uh, so that is coming up next week. So make sure you stay tuned. And if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button. Keep safe, everyone. And I'll see you next time. And here's a sneaky look at my first attempt of flying my first drone. You may be surprised to hear I didn't crash it once. Hooray! So hopefully after a bit more practice, I can start including some nice drone shots in my hiking videos. Have a great week, everyone!